Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, we, I hope you have had a chance to look at um, a documentary, which I find quite interesting, called Life and Death, which is a, a story about uh, Haiti, one of the developing countries, and how uh, external borrowing really uh, constitutes a constraint to economic development in that particular country. What you, the story of, of Haiti applies to other, other developing countries which are forced to borrow uh, from uh, the rest of the world and yet they depend on the rest of the world for also their exports and their, their imports and that puts them in a, in a very difficult uh, uh, situation. As you recall, um, Starting from the 1980s, Africa, I mean, developing countries experienced the severe problems with, with debt. In fact, in 1982, Mexico had to default on its debt because they could no longer pay. And that uh, ushered a new era of uh, debt distress for developing countries that sent their economies in, in a tailspin with declining growth and rising poverty. So the, the problem of, of external borrowing is an, is an important one when you're talking about macroeconomic uh, performance in, 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 in all countries. Uh, even in the US, uh, uh, one of the concerns is that the government has a uh, huge amount of debt and that, that puts a, a, a strain on, on the policy space that uh, uh, policymakers have to play with in promoting economic activity. Now, for, de for de developing countries in, in particular, um, external borrowing carries uh, a number of risks. What we have seen is that many of them, having accumulated a, a, a high amount of debt, became unable to pay uh, to service the debt on a regular basis, which in many cases forces them to borrow more money to, to service the debt. So you, you borrow so much that you are unable to, to, pay, to, to service the debt and you end up actually needing to borrow more so you can, you can pay, back the, pay back past loans, which means that future loans, uh, in the future, the loan uh, burden keeps increasing. And what you find as, is that in, in many cases, we have seen this historically, where the, our international financial system is plagued by what I call perverse incentives, where the lenders, in fact, many times have incentive on even pushing loans on, on unsuspecting uh, borrowers. We saw this happen in the 70s where because of the rise, uh, the, ex the explosion of uh, oil prices, there was way too much money in the hands of oil exporters who put the money in, in banks and banks have had way too much money on their hands and they were willing to find anybody who was willing to borrow. So developing countries fit with, with found themselves in a situation where it was an easy money to, to obtain from, from lenders, but at the same time, because not all, not all of them were, uh, used the money to invest wisely, eventually down the road they, they faced themselves, they, put the, they find themselves, themselves in, a, in a problem of uh, uh, debt distress. Um, there is a linkage between external borrowing and, and trade, which we discussed uh, earlier. Um, one is that if a country is not exporting enough, which means that they are not uh, uh, receiving, generating enough, uh, uh, enough, enough export revenue, and yet at the same time they have to buy foreign, foreign goods, they have to import foreign goods, that means that they, are, they will have to borrow to make up the, to make, to make up the gap. In, in many developing countries you find that uh, external financing makes up, in some countries, 40% uh, even half uh, of the more than half of the of the government budget that part of it is external external borrowing but of course down the road the country has to to pay to, to repay the, the debt so debt service ends up eating a big chunk of their their domestic uh, of their of their revenue which displaces uh, resources from essential uh, uh, development expenditures like education and health. So in the debt, um, in, the, in the movie on uh, debt, life and debt, you were able to see the, the kind of development trap that um, Haiti is found, finds it, it, itself in, where domestic producers are competing with cheap imported, imported goods and they cannot manage to, 
uh, to, to break into the markets. So a tomato producer from Haiti finds it difficult to sell locally produced tomatoes because foreign uh, imported tomatoes are, are cheaper. This is true for uh, textile and other, other, other products uh, as well. The, I talked about the, uh, the importance of the exchange rate when, when we talked about the, uh, uh, the issues of, of trade. Uh, it is also the case that here the exchange rate matters also when we, do, when we, deal, when we deal with debt issues. It all depends especially on the denomination of the, foreign ex uh, of the government debt, the public debt. So if, for example, you, you were to compare the U.S. and Haiti, the U.S. is one of the most heavily indebted uh, governments in the world. Haiti is a heavily indebted government, a country also. But what is the difference between the two? Haiti borrows from the rest of the world primarily. They, they have some domestic debt, but foreign debt is a, is a huge amount. In contrast, most of the U.S. debt is actually domestic. That's one thing. But also, the U.S. Uh, Haiti borrows in, a foreign, in foreign currencies and has to pay in foreign currencies. But Haiti produces domestic, its domestic goods in local, which are, which are sold on, on uh, uh, people earn their income in, in, in domestic uh, currency. So what you have here is the imbalance between the revenue that, uh, the, that the economy is producing and the, uh, the, the repayment obligations which are in foreign currencies. So if then the exchange rate changes, what happens? So take again the case of Haiti. If the, if the Haiti, Haitian government has borrowed from the rest of the world, you'll find that most, a uh, large part of the, of, the, of, the, of the debt will be, say, in U.S. dollars. There may be some in, in, in euros. But um, in, in, in any case, it's in, foreign, in a foreign currency. So what happens if the U.S. dollar appreciates vis-a-vis -vis the Haitian currency? That means that the, um, since normally the debt contracts are, are made in nominal terms, so the face value is the face value. If you, have to, if you borrow the $100, you pay $100. But if the dollar appreciates, that means that uh, Haiti will have to raise more domestic money to pay that same amount of $100, because the dollar now is, more, is worth more. That puts a lot of pressure on Haiti to produce more, to export more, to pay the same amount of foreign, uh, foreign debt. So that's the critical difference between what you see as high debt levels in developing countries compared to, say, with the U.S., which has the, the privilege of having a, a, a currency, which is an international currency that uh, everybody uh, is demanding for their, for their imports. So what you end up finding then is that uh, there is a connection between debt dependence and export dependence, because if a country has, has built up so much debt, they will have to pay to service the debt, which is in a foreign currency, which means that they have to export to earn the foreign exchange and pay the loans. Whereas a, if a, a country that's not heavily indebted vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world can uh, base its, its growth strategy on the, on the domestic market uh, because they don't have to earn foreign exchange. So that's the situation that where, Africa, uh, where developing countries find themselves in where they have borrowed so much that they need to export as much to be able to pay to, to, pay, uh, for, for, to service the debt. But at the same time, they have no control, they don't have full uh, control on the exchange rate value uh, of, their, of their national currency vis-a-vis -vis foreign exchange. They, many times you find that they don't have control over the, the price of the goods that they're, they're exporting. And that's one of the, uh, the, some of the key sources of the debt problems that we see in, in, in developing countries. So the close connection between debt and uh, ex exchange rate, export dependence, import dependence, 
and these have implications on, on growth prospects and also at the, uh, on the macroeconomic environment in general. Thank you.